here today in Springfield, Oregon on September 10th and we are back in full-blown fire season 2020. We didn't have this kind of a inundation of the hazardous fire smoke until something like the 15th to 18th. I'm about to head to the hardware store. I need to pick up some tape so I can make a at home filter using the furnace filters and a box fan. Luckily I've got some furnace filters that were left over from last year and the year before so I've got enough material on hand to make one of the big double filtered fans. Increases the surface area, it doesn't put as much stress on the fan so that you can actually run it. This shit makes my face so itchy. Hey there, so with all of the fires and the air quality that's happening right now in the Willamette Valley and across Oregon and a lot of the country and anywhere that you might be watching this, I'm going to do a little demo. Please excuse, I am not going to bother cleaning my house uh, before I do this, but I've got a couple different kinds of box fans, sort of, and I just wanted to show folks how we managed to keep the air inside of our home clean during the 2020 fires, during the shorter period of smoke last year, and what I'm getting set up right now. So what I have here are the filters just that we have left over. I got these last year. They say that they can handle smoke. However, when you look over here, it says that they're really not made for things like candle soot or ultra fine particles, exhaust particles. And when you do have these kinds of wildfire conditions, a lot of the particles in the air are actually a lot smaller. You've got the whole spectrum of soot particles in the air. So this isn't even the best, but we're hoping since we've got the windows closed and we're gonna keep things closed up tight as well as we can, this is going to be at least better than nothing. So this is what I mean by the two different types of box fans that I have. As you can see, one has the cord coming out from the bottom and the other has the cord coming out from somewhere in the middle. Now we actually used this in previous years because what's nice about this type of fan that doesn't have it coming out from the middle, you can put it up in the window. So if you absolutely have to run the filter, for example, at night, because for maybe you don't have air conditioning, you can put just one filter up against it because these 20 by 20 filters match up pretty perfectly to these square box fans. However, the kind of filter that I'm gonna put together is a kind that uses two so essentially it's going to be two filters on either side and then as you can see i saved this big piece of cardboard from when we bought the filters from when we bought the fans and we're going to use that to seal up the top and then just tape along these edges and along the edge back here and so what i did with the cord is we ran the cord up and just through the top here and then taped all around it. And we did it that way so that we could plug it in. The plugs that are in our home are mostly higher up. So it didn't have to go as far. And we do also have some extension cords so we could move it around the house to wherever we were sleeping, for example, so we didn't wake up hacking. You can see on this one how we actually cut a little slit so that we could run the cord out from underneath because in previous years we have had at least two of these running in our house. Now I'm just going off of what we have 
now because I know that there are a lot of people who are probably rushing out and purchasing these since we already had these on hand. I'm just gonna do this until we really have a need for more. Now the biggest tip that I have for these machines, as you can see, this one has the knob, you can turn it on on top. This one has the knob inside where you're gonna put the filter. So my biggest tip is to set it to the highest setting and that way when you plug it in, it'll turn on and to turn it off, you just unplug it. So for step one, I went ahead and applied the tape to the bottom first. I did that just with one piece of tape real quick so that I can go back over it. I'll make sure everything's totally airtight later. But what I want to make sure that I can do is fit my filters on here appropriately. I think we actually maybe had some even longer filters last year or something. But either way, I'm just gonna make it so that they meet up here in the back. Once I've done that, then I can put the top piece of cardboard on and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Another tip with these fans is like I said, if you know that you're gonna run your cord out of the top, you know, just don't don't make yourself have to do extra work. Make sure it's up top. Um, obviously, you can always pull it through the bottom, but maybe not after you've taped up the top. Helps you not forget. If you know that your outlets are all going to be closer to the floor, or you were like running a extension cord, same thing. So this is the finished product for me. Like I said, I ran the cord out here. I did have to just use a box cutter to recut some of these edges to make it match up to the size that I've got this year. I use packing tape, or rather this is masking tape, and on previous years I have used packing tape. And I did have to do a lot of layers around these edges just to make sure that it's airtight so that we're not sucking air where we don't want it to go. We want everything to go through the filters. So again, if you have this style, if you've got one where the knob is on top, you don't need to worry about it as much, but when you're doing it with one of these, which I like better because not having a handle on top means that it's easier to make this seal, but make sure that you check that you've turned it to the highest setting because nothing would be more devastating than plugging this thing in and then having it not work on account of that you forgot to do that or it's set to a lower setting so it's not pulling the maximum amount of air through these filters. Okay, so here is our final product. It's got fresh air coming out of it. We've sealed up any holes around the top, down here at the bottom where these little feet are. Okay, so my apologies for the ambient noise. I'm gonna leave that fan running now that I have it set up so that it can actually filter the air here in the house. I do have another air filter that I put up in the kids' room that's just like the regular one that we use all the time. It's nice to have these, especially in the room where you're gonna sleep at night. You're spending however many, six to eight to 10 hours in one room breathing that air and so making sure that the windows are sealed that's going to be my next project is to go around the house there are a couple windows that don't quite seal all the way shut and so i'm going to be putting masking tape on those i've got a towel that's under my front door right now because the seal around the front door is broken and a few more tips i know that there are going to be many places in oregon that are going to have rolling blackouts. They're going to be shutting the power off on purpose as the winds pick up. So if these blackouts occur in the evening or at night, try to be using things like flashlights or electric lanterns because those aren't going to further reduce the air quality inside your home. Burning things like candles is going to produce soot in the air that's going to further reduce the air quality. Also, if you have to open the windows in the evening, for example, because of not having air conditioning in your home, or if you have an air conditioner that sucks in air from outside, make sure that you're either putting a filter over that somehow, or if there's a filter within it, change that out. 
Obviously, I'm talking about people who are living in apartments or older buildings that don't have a central air system that is already gonna be using something like one of these furnace filters that I've made this little guy out of today. I'm just sending big prayers, loving prayers out to everyone who's being affected by these fires. I know that my partner went to the store this morning and he ran into a gentleman who had just had to evacuate from Oak Ridge. They did an evacuation in the middle of the night last night. I hope everyone who is able to reaches out to anyone that they know who might need a place to stay, who might just want to come and have a home-cooked meal somewhere. It is kind of messed up because today is also the opening game for the Ducks football team and they have not canceled the game so there will be a lot of people taking up the hotels and the restaurants that are here from out of town in my experience every night that there is an in-town ducks game for the football team everything has been sold out and that is very bad timing for all of the the influx of people that we're going to have in the next 24 48 who knows how many hours this is going to continue to be a problem where people can't return home and they're gonna need places to stay. So I will, if I can find any links for shelters or anywhere that's doing aid for people who had to evacuate their homes last night or in the coming days, I'm gonna try and leave all the links I can and update the description for this video. I hope that this helps anyone out there who needs to know how they can have better indoor air quality during these fire seasons and hopefully I have new videos um, coming to report on how conditions are in the area soon. Thanks.